So, uh, yes, I would say we have a little break. And in this break, uh, maybe the speakers uh, from the next session could come up, which is uh, Mr. Chen Ping from uh, SPIC Hydrogen Energy, uh, Professor Kahlo, Philip Scheffel, and uh, Michael Friend. If you all could uh, put on your screen, uh, then I can see who's there. And uh, uh, Chen Ping, I suppose you're in the uh, audience uh, on the stage. So if you would come to the stage as you're the first speaker, this would be great. While the time this is happening, I have the possibility to um, thank our sponsors um, because without sponsors it would be very difficult to have an event like this big sponsor is sure our chinese host city yishan uh, but there are also uh, some suppliers which supported us which one is rolls royce who has been uh, even before the rolls royce electrical which most of you know has been before uh, Siemens Electric Aircraft, and they since the beginning they supported the eFly Forum. Then we have FACC, who you heard right now, who is a supplier on the structural base. We have Bosch General Aviation, which you will hear in the next session, and we will have Helix, which is a prop manufacturer involved in very many eVTOL projects, and he will be um, on the stage tomorrow in the first session on electric propulsion we see um, yeah we can start you, we can start okay. we, we can start perfect then uh, if you share the screen again ah perfect that's great so yeah we are on time and uh curious to hear what you tell us about hydrogen development in china thank you very much thank you so really uh watch it we will you go see uh uh fit on the 呃，荣幸能参加我们这个呃航空的论坛。Today's meeting is my first time here, and I will give you a brief introduction of SPIC Hydrogen Energy Corporation Limited and also the R&D of my company in the aviation industry. So the topic of my presentation is the clean carbon and clean energy for the aviation industry. So three parts in my presentation, first about the development of UAV and then the introduction of the hydrogen development of SPIC and the third part is about the air cooling battery systems. So first about the UAV market analysis, I think you are very familiar with this topic, but I think for my company, we are not an expert in this side. Um, the registration of UAV in China is growing steadily. As you can see on the screen, we have about 400,000 UAVs in China, and also the size for UAV in recent years has been expanding. According to my uh, by 2025, the market will continue to grow, and by 2025, it is expected to reach 56 billion yuan in terms of the mark value, market value. About the types of the UAVs, um, there are four types. We have the unmanned helicopter with several advantages and disadvantages like the low battery life and also for the fixed wing uavs it can fly very high with high speed however its takeoff and the landing are kind of limited it cannot hover in the air and for the multi rotor uavs it is very flexible in operation but it can 
be applied in the limited scenarios. And also for the compound rotor UAVs, it has low requirement for the landing and takeoff, and it can have the high capacity for the load. However, for the long navigation, it needs a lot of energy and power. For the power systems for the UAV, it has three categories, the diesel generators, lithium battery, and also the fossil fuel, and also the fuel cell batteries. For the diesel generator, it is a traditional power system. The output has the advantage of the strong variable load capacity. And it faces the problem of pollution like carbon emission and also the emission of the toxic substance. Oh, the energy density is low. We believe in the future, in order to meet the uh, energy consum consumption reduction, we will not use a diesel engine in the future. And uh, the second type is lithium battery. It is very stable. It has very stable output, but um, it performs not so well when in low temperature and uh, the energy density is also low. So the weight to energy ratio is not great. The aircraft or the engine itself is um, heavily weighed and uh, um, the battery is more suitable for short range aircraft. And uh, the third type is fuel battery. So this is um, like a hybrid powertrain. So um, fuel um, energy. A uh, fuel battery can perform very well. It can even start up in um, minus 30 Celsius degree, and it also has a higher energy density. And it is possible for a fuel battery to support a long range of flight. For UAV, um, the fuel battery can support high density of energy and uh, it is very flexible in terms of temperature. Uh, uh, short summary of UAV. Uh, the short, uh, a short summary of the merits of the hydrogen fuel battery to support UAV. And we think that um, it is very powerful to support the future development of UAV. And uh, in the second part, I'm going to talk about our company's R&D and innovation in hydrogen energy. Developing hydrogen energy can help guarantee um, energy safety of our country. And uh, SPIC is the largest company in clean energy production. So we have wind power and uh, solar power, etc. And uh, energy is the biggest issue in emission reduction. And uh, we need to lower down our dependence on fossil fuel. And hydrogen can be a very important or very good alternative fuel source. This is an electrical hydrogen system for future energy. So um, the future energy source can be, first of all, electricity, and the second is hydrogen. And uh, hydrogen, uh, there is a very big existence of hydrogen in this um, world. And uh, 
in the oxidation and the reaction process, hydrogen can be produced and uh, no carbon will be produced at all. And uh, when we generate power, we still face a lot of gas and uh, wind and uh, photothermal powers. And uh, we think that we should um, start store these energies and uh, they can be complementary to each other. Our company has made big deployment in both hydrogen production, storage, transportation and the usage. And uh, the two ends are the focus. So in terms of the use of hydrogen, we also um, focus on the development of fuel battery, which can be a very important energy source for transportation. This is some of our deployment. Our group uh, in our energy production chain, we use recyclable um, hydrogen production and uh, build a hydrogen energy network. And uh, in terms of the uh, use of hydrogen, we also produce the fuel battery and the fuel hydrogen fuel storage. The company I'm currently working at is the SPIC Hydrogen Energy Company. So we mainly focus on the hydrogen energy and uh, new energy production. And uh, the strategic positioning of our, of our company is the integration platform of both the R&D and uh, advanced manufacturing of hydrogen energy. And uh, we are the first mover and uh, front leader of the uh, market renovation. We are a state-owned company and uh, we show the great responsibility in the promotion of new energy. This is our development goal. Through market reform and development, we aim to build um, hydrogen energy as our uh, self-owned um, key technology, and we hope that we can have independent self-owned technology in hydrogen energy development. So we hope to integrate both the upstream and the downstream, including the voltaic pile and uh, the carbon plate and uh, electrode plate. These are all very important. So from the materials to the production of the fuel batteries, we own all of these technologies called technologies. And second, we hope to build up our production or industrial scale through the integration of technological R&D and advanced manufacturing. We aim to be the uh, industrial leader in the development of hydrogen energy battery, and uh, we hope that our revenue can reach 10 billion by 2025 and uh, 100 billion by 2030. Certainly, we also hope that we can have a fundraising capability. Although we are a state-owned company, we still a uh, very important pilot company in uh, market reform and uh, uh, fundraising from private companies. So um, our market value exceeded 10 billion, uh, aimed to exceed 10 billion by 2023. And uh, we hope that we can um, exceed, we can have IPO in 2025. And fourthly, we hope that we can have the uh, top leaders of this industry. And uh, right now, our talents, um, the majority of them are coming from abroad, and uh, we hope that we can have more of this kind of talents. 
And in terms of R&D, we want to have our independent R&D capability in the fuel battery, and we hope that we can make high performance, low cost um, hydrogen fuel battery. And uh, we benchmark with um, Toyota. And we hope that we can be a um, front runner in this uh, segment. And the uh, second, um, our battery is mainly for mobility use, uh, for automobile, and sometimes also for uh, sh ships vessels and then in terms of uh, the production of hydrogen storage and transportation of the hydrogen we mainly focus on the production of um, hydrogen and also the safety technology r d such as hydrogen safety research platform this is the R&D of key materials. Uh, our indicators, uh, key performance indicators for commercial catalysts. And uh, we also benchmark or compare with um, international companies' um, catalyst products. I won't elaborate on it. And uh, here it's the voltaic pile and some of the key data of these um, R&D and testing result. And uh, in terms of the um, product R&D, we've already uh, own our independent technologies in battery voltage pile and uh, we have two grade of voltage pile and in terms of the system, we've already uh, completed the R&D of uh, three levels of fuel battery system, and uh, which will be applied in the Boal Forum and also Winter Olympic Games. Due to time limits, I'll accelerate. So uh, this is the product, some of the new product, and uh, we have the air cooling and also big uh, power water cooling battery system. And uh, finally, I would like to talk about the air cooling fuel battery system for UAV. So from small scale to big scale, uh, UAV, um, we, we have um, 1.2 kilowatt, 2.5 kilowatt to 10 to 30 kilowatt series of battery. So how can we integrate the battery system into UAV? First of all, the power trim should be mat should be compatible. Uh, what kind of power is required and what kind of structure should it be? And uh, how can we integrate it into the structure of the UAV to make the entire structure design compact and lightweighted? And we also use a lot of new materials in order to improve the strength and uh, crash worthiness of the UAV. And uh, with regard to the control system, we also have a integrated control structure. And uh, with regard to the energy management, we have a very good allocation and arrangement of both um, electric power and uh, hydrogen power. And this is the reliability um, testing result here. So we work with Comat um, to develop a um, H series fuel battery hybrid system. The takeoff power is 3000 watt, and uh, the endurance is 40 minutes. And this is a very lightweight design, and the total um, weight of the aircraft is just 28 kilograms. So um, 
the project started from August 2018 till now, and uh, we aim to make it very lightweighted, compact, and uh, the best performance in energy management, so as to really deliver a high performance, high quality flight. And uh, we also equip uh, the aircraft is also equipped with 10 kilowatt of um, battery system and it has a very high energy density it has a very um good volatile control and energy management and another project here is a 30 kilowatt fuel battery system so we use a distributed integration system there is a air cooling system and then we use 10 of this kind of units in it and distribute it into uh the aircraft so as to really reach a high performance of the power. And this is a multi-rotor UAV fuel battery system. We are currently at the conceptual design period. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And just in time, uh, really good um, and very interesting. And uh, I, I really see that we have to know more about what's going on in China because we read about our fuel cell developments in Europe. But as I see, there are a lot of other developments in other parts of the world. And so now we have our next speakers. Now we move again from China uh, into uh, Europe into Germany. We have uh, Professor Josef Kahlo, uh, who uh, worked a long time for DLR, and now he has his own company working on fuel cell. And I'm happy to have him here. And uh, maybe you can try if you can share your screen. And uh, I will already switch my uh, screen off. Uh, then if you go to the presentation mode, then I think I can switch off. Yeah, here we go. And I, the stage is yours, Yoda. So, Willy, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to speak about our work. And I also have seen uh, very well-known names from Europe and China on this list. So I'm happy to have this opportunity to talk to you all. So who is H2Fly? So H2Fly is a company who was uh, created out of the research center DLR together with the University of Ulm. And uh, we started 15 years ago with an evolutionary development um, on implementing fuel cell system and storage, hydrogen storage system into aircraft, and then connect them with electric motors and fly them around. So you see on the left side, our first DLR H2 prototype a manned aircraft, which had a chance to fly around Germany. So we had a tour of Germany with that. And then newer days, we have the HY4, which is a four-seater aircraft flying around now with the sixth generation of the hydrogen fuel cell powertrain, including an own development on the motor and the implementation of hydrogen storage system. We had a total of seven flight test campaigns in the last couple of years, where we learned how to build also bigger um, powertrains up to like megawatt scale. Based on that, we signed a memorandum of understanding and we have projects running with uh, Deutsche Aircraft, who is the builder of the new DO328 aircraft. And we will have this aircraft as a flying demonstrator by 2526. Also, maybe mentioning word is we had a very successful se second financial round. So that allows us to accelerate and to build technology and to go demonstrate into megawatt scale. We are located in Stuttgart, where we have a 6,200 square meter development center, uh, where we push forward the hydrogen fuel cell, the storage system, and the electric motor complete powertrain. What, our, what are our achievements? You see here the HY4 in flight. 
It has a maximum power of 110 kilowatt. Uh, it can go maximum 1,200 kilometers. And important for us was that now we can do also operator flights so we can take people on board which after a short introduction they can experience the emission-free flight with hydrogen. What, our, what are our strengths when it comes to the aircraft integration? We are working together with partners. Um, we see their major challenges putting megawatt scale powertrain into an aircraft, uh, but also, we have solutions how to integrate them, how to run the components, and also how to integrate the storage system. Um, our key proposition are that we can develop requirements based on the technology, so on the hydrogen fuel cell system, on the storage system, and on the electric propulsion. We can define together with the OEMs system architectures of that powertrain, and we can realize the aircraft integration together with the OEM regarding the powertrain. That is based on our very broad and deep knowledge on how to bring together a fuel cell system, hydrogen storage system, and how to integrate them to a functional uh, system. So not only the integration and the functionality is important there, but also very first steps on qualification and later on certification are done. We have our own processes to get to the permit to fly. Mainly we have our own qualification tests to go to the point where we can deliver uh, knowledge to get the permit to fly together with the authorities. Also, we know how to do improvements and upgrades on components of the fuel cell system, the tank system, and on the electric propulsion side. And we built proprietary IP very broad in that area to bring that together with the system integration uh, to a powertrain. What is the goal? So the problem is we have in Europe, 42% um, of aviation emissions are under 2000 kilometers. We delivered 63 million tons of CO2. When we look at um, the EU 28, so before the Brexit. And then regarding the efficiency and the CO2 emissions, we see that there is a lot of CO2 emissions on the passenger kilometer if we go flying with the architecture of conventional kerosene. So our goal would be to realize first a capacity of 40 seats into an aircraft going 2000 kilometers with zero CO2 emissions. So what is our power? So what is our schedule for that? Um, we had 2020 and 21 flights and we will have also 22 flights on the actual HY4 with improved components, additional to what we had in the past. Then we will have the maiden flight of the 300 kilowatt system uh, also on the HY4 platform, but that is aiming for general aviation, that is aiming for smaller applications like air taxis and smaller planes. The big achievement would be 2025, where, when our ground test of 1.5 megawatt will be uh, finished. And that is the main, so that will show firstly that it is possible to go with the propulsion in upscaling capabilities to megawatt scale. The maiden flight is expected in beginning of 26 of the DO328 which should have then the possibility to be used as a development demonstrator and development um, yeah, flight demonstrator to go into commercialization. Our first commercialization would be in the region of 300 kilowatt. The second one in 2030, 32 will go in the megawatt scale. Based on this, I have to say thank you very much for your attention. And if you have questions, please ask. Thank you very much, uh, Josef. And the questions we will have in the question session right after this sequence with all the other speakers. And thank you very much because like I hear your presentations over years, you've been also in China with us and it's every time it's something new. 
So that's really good to see shows that you're really uh, progressing uh, here. Our next speaker, uh, Philip Scheffel, has uh, not been with Thank us in China much. yet, but he has been in uh, the last year's conference. He's also working on hydrogen and on electric projects. Um, and I, the best thing is I let him explain much better what he's doing. He's working with his company APOS in different projects. So, uh, Philip, yeah, if you could uh, try, if you can share your screen, because then I can switch my screen off. Let's see, screen sharing state started. Great, now we just have to get the presentation mode. Yes, we are, and I switch myself off. Stage is yours. You're still muted, Philip. Philip, you're still muted. Okay, no, that's can better. You hear me now? You can yes, hear me now? we hear you now. All right, okay. So uh, thank you all. Uh, thank you, Willy, uh, for your invitation. Um, good evening to China. And uh, thank you to be able to present again um, about APUS. Uh, last year, I presented our general roadmap. And um, yeah, we moved on on this. And uh, Let's see where we are. Um, this is uh, just a short reminder uh, and to the newcomers here in this uh, group, this is APUS. Uh, we are a design organization, production organization and some qualification uh, standards. We are nowadays uh, 30 plus engineers. Um, we are working uh, fixed on this, uh, on this location. And we um, are able here to uh, design from the first scratch from the white paper until uh, prototyping um, until the first flight. We did a lot of programs in the past, um, also uh, standard aviation um, developments, uh, full aircraft designs uh, and prototyping. And uh, during the last years, we are more and more focused on uh, zero emission powertrains. That's what we are uh, doing now here. Um, do you see my full screen or on the right side, the zoom um, bar? No, I think the full screen, yeah, it works. Okay, it seems like. Um, so uh, with the zero emission technologies, we are uh, working with uh, hybrid energy management systems, all the high voltage systems, um, storage systems for hydrogen and um, uh, have the experience to integrate everything um, and certify uh, such systems um, like um, like h 2 fly presented before. Uh, we do such things uh, too. And um, today I want to uh, have a look a little bit to the storage uh, systems and some aspects uh, to that. Uh, but uh, once again, um, a five ton um, maximum takeoff weight aircraft um, a test and technology platform that we are uh, designing for and with uh, Royce Royce to test powertrains from 600 kilowatts up to 1.5 kilowatt uh, systems. So pure uh, technology carrier um, to test high voltage systems and high power uh, electrical powertrains. Let's look a little bit more to the Apple's I-2, a four to six seater general aviation cruise aircraft that we are building ourselves in our uh, workshops. Um, it is a twin engine, pure electric aircraft. Uh, the fuel cells are uh, in the front part of the fuselage and the um, hydrogen storage in the wing. It's completely new design, um, customized and optimized for the use of hydrogen. That means um, there's a special uh, airfoil that can contain enough um, hydrogen to reach um, ranges of um, 800 kilometers and more. Um, so this is a competitive aircraft to fossil um, fuel using aircrafts, four seaters like Cirrus SR-22 or Diamond uh, DA-40. That is uh, the competition for this aircraft. Um, the big advantage is uh, for this aircraft, we will reduce the direct operational cost by 20%. Um, so, that's something very reasonable for customers to buy such an aircraft. And um, that underlines the future success uh, of such a product. 
that's a look in our uh, workshop. Um, you can see here the Apus I2 um, today. By, by the way, just today we are building the second fuselage uh, for the flight. This is a test uh, frame here. Um, we are producing all composites part here. Here's a milling. We have a milling machine um, and our stuff is able to do metal work, uh, composite work, um, everything you need to build an aircraft in-house here. So just some uh, short aspects to um, why we chose uh, the hydrogen system uh, like we did. There are, of course, a long discussion, and you heard a lot of this uh, in uh, today. But this is, um, um, I pick out uh, some things. First is the storage density. We know all uh, uh, it has a, a 33 um, kilowatt hours per kilogram I energy density. And uh, but how much uh, gravimetric uh, density and uh, volumetric uh, space is needed depends on how you store uh, the hydrogen. And uh, there is uh, a competition between cryogen um, hydrogen and pressurized cryo um, uh, pressurized hydrogen. We chose um, the uh, the pressurized hydrogen. So we are um, on a 300 bar system. We store it in the wings in uh, uh, very long tubes, um, 11 meter long tubes with around 200 millimeters diameter. And um, I want to explain why we chose that. Even the cryogen um, uh, storage is uh, has a much higher density, so needs lower volume, uh, lower space um, for this. Um, there, is a, uh, there are some specifics um, um, of cryogen um, hydrogen, and this is uh, the warm up and the resulting blow off of uh, such uh, the tanks because they warm up uh, and uh, the hydrogen wants to expand and you have to uh, blow it off. And this becomes worse if the uh, volume surface uh, ratio is low. And uh, from, from uh, construction, houses construction, we know this as a, uh, as a figure, as compactness. Uh, so the ratio of volume and surface, and you can generally state uh, when you have low compactness, so small um, units um, uh, and a, not such a good volume surface uh, um, ratio, then it makes sense to use uh, pressurized systems. Once you become to bigger compactnesses, so bigger aircrafts, um, the perfect compactness is a bowl, um, by the way, uh, then the cryogen um, uh, um, uh, storage makes more sense. Um, we are really on the uh, clear side um, uh, to, to use uh, pressurized hydrogen. So that's why we used it. Uh, we could not afford some isolation. You see, this is the cross section of our wing, how the uh, uh, hydrogen is located. And if we would apply some insulations here, uh, we would not have enough um, volume for hydrogen. That's uh, the reason, one of the reasons uh, for this. Um, so with our system, we finally reach um, an energy density of 2,300 watt hours per kilogram when you compare it to batteries. It's a big difference. And um, uh, when you compare it to car uh, um, systems, pressurized systems, we are even better. And that's why we skip um, the, um, the beam, the, the spar in the, in the wings and use the hydrogen fuel tanks even to carry the wing loads. So there are, but there are some uh, complex uh, uh, research uh, topics still. Um, there's still some development necessary, some difficulties with structural integrated fuel tanks. We have uh, expansion of such systems. So uh, some connecting to the, um, to the structure. This is uh, something you have to control. Uh, uh, manufacturing of such slim structures is uh, more difficult than um, than compact uh, structures. 
by the axis for the liner and so on. Um, so the sealing is more difficult, but um, this is possible. And uh, uh, in the meanwhile, we can control such processes. The second aspect I wanted to talk about is energy efficiency. I go through this um, quite fast because uh, time is short, but I want to look to the efficiency from producing green energy by a wind power or windmill uh, until um, the power on the propeller. And um, I compare um, always making hydrogen from the uh, green electric energy. Um, and doing something with it until uh, the wind comes out from the propeller. So the first one is the um, combustion engine that is using uh, some uh, sustainable aviation fuel. Um, the efficiency is, I don't uh, explain uh, this now because uh, I think you know all the, how, how this efficiency are coming out by electrolysis and fischer uh, synthesis to, to produce such fuels. We have 16% efficiency. Uh, the next better one is to use the SIF, uh, the, the SAF, the sustainable aviation fuel, for example, methanol in a fuel cell. We have a little bit better efficiency. Um, to pressurize it, the uh, hydrogen directly, don't um, produce sustainable aviation fuels. So, um, um, skip this fischer tropsch synthesis uh, that has a quite low uh, efficiency or has at least uh, some efficiency and reduce the total, total one, burn it by the fuel cell system. And what we using, uh, the most simple one, uh, doing electrolysis, pressurize the hydrogen, uh, not to a very high uh, pressure, but to 300 bar, and then use it in the fuel cell system, uh, we can gain uh, a total efficiency of 30%. That's why we are choosing this uh, system, because we have small aircrafts, uh, so the uh, storage efficiency is high uh, for such systems, and the energy um, efficiency is very high by using simply uh, uh, pressurized hydrogen um, but and there's always a but um, we are here at one of the most complex technologies um, to using simply sustainable aviation fuel is the most simple one because we can use existing technology um, and to produce those is quite simple so um, we have to spend the highest effort at the beginning to make it come true uh, but at the end, um, when we have to think about how efficient we can use green energy, um, this will be for sure one solution for aviation. And that's why we focus on this one. Okay, some uh, the conclusions of this uh, presentation. Hydrogen will be definitely an essential part of the energy mix in aviation. This is clear. Um, batteries too, sustainable aviation uh, fuels too, but also hydrogen. Hydrogen pressure tanks have big advantages in slim structures, such as we um, use in, using them. Cryogenic tanks have advantage in uh, more compact structures, um, like passenger aircrafts, bigger aircrafts with big volume available in the fuselage. Um, so the high pressure tanks are suitable for small aviation and the other ones for bigger aviation. Um, the sustainable aviation fuels will have a role, but in my point of view, they can be only a bridge technology uh, when we mean it serious to save uh, the climate of this planet. Thank you for your attention and uh, yeah, I hope we will all together develop technologies uh, that will bring us forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Philip. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, um, I can't. Uh, yes, I should be on screen now. Um, and uh, now we go on to our next speaker, who is online already, Christian Grimm. Um, and uh, we talked before. Uh, on uh, the opportunity of uh, certifying and working with suppliers mm -hmm. and um, also on the fuels in the fuel cell world 
uh, in the hydrogen world, we will need suppliers for so who supply these parts. And here we have Christian Gim, who is a CEO of uh, Bosch General Aviation. Bosch has been also from the beginning presenting at the eFlight Forum. And happy to have you here, first time, Christian, as he just is in this position, I think, since the uh, middle of last year. So, Christian. Uh, I see your uh, presentation is on. Uh, your mic is unmuted. I leave the stage. It's yours. Okay. Thank you very much, Willy. Uh, and uh, hello, everybody, to Europe, to the Americas, and also to uh, to Asia. It's a pleasure to speak in uh, um, uh, at this event. Uh, and thank you very much for the nice words, Willy, and the introduction. Um, as we can see, um, the hydrogen. Um, is really a topic um, which is going abroad a lot of industries. Uh, I'm representing Bosch, and as you might know, we are one of the biggest uh, tier one suppliers in uh, automotive industry and also for truck, truck application of high application. So also looking forward to sustainable solutions of the future, um, we are working in a very broad um, uh, to, together with other industries. And as you can see here, uh, mainly driven, of course, from the passenger car sector, also for truck application, but in addition, um, we have a look also on infrastructure, um, how to have the solutions uh, for safe, clean and reliable mobility of today, of the near future, which will allow us and give us the opportunity also uh, to start the transition and also technology and component share between the industries from the traditional grounded mobility solutions to the aviation solutions. Um, what um, um, we are doing now since uh, nearly 15 years uh, in operation for aviation usage uh, at the moment or in the last years focusing on the transition for the traditional combustion engines, which will play a role uh, in mid uh, in short to midterm, but also looking forward to uh, new uh, propulsion systems like uh, hydrogen in the future. <clears throat> Electromobility will become a Bosch wide core business in the near future. And our highest goal in as a company is that the CO2 free mobility uh, will be real, will be on our roads and will be a major and gross area of uh, the future. Um, as you can see here, and that is what we are typical um, um, uh, compared with our, our traditional portfolio is, these are the mobility solutions for like uh, the small vehicles like uh, e-bikes, for example, also the passenger cars and all the varieties and sizes, truck application and off-highway application. So our big aim is to have the right technology for all mobility needs for every application, every region and every policy. We will see that especially the introduction of new propulsion systems like H2 combustion engine, for example, or even fuel cell applications using the hydrogen, um, they will not develop in the same speed in all areas, in all regions and in all applications. We see that there will be technology driven um, uh, regions like China, uh, there we see there will be a strong push and also there will be uh, like the early adopters and we have the, the our target to uh, have the right solution for every application region and also the policy. And our products um, for the fuel cell electric vehicle are still, they are already on the roads, especially in China. Here you can see one of the, the first projects and which is our um, an early adopter project for the fuel cell electric vehicle. Um, we have established with uh, our Chinese partners also with a local strong local presence um, to bring it on the track uh, in on the Chinese roads as a um, as a first commercial vehicle with our fuel cell technology system, uh, which is already in use. On which particular topics and, and, and technologies, components we would like to focus or, or we see the biggest benefit to transfer this uh, proven technology or uh, because already established technology into the aviation is in the field of the so-called balanced plant components. 
Um, as you see here in this scheme, um, we have different systems uh, or different subsystems in uh, and fuel cell system, for, for example. Um, here indicated in the green color, we have the hydrogen subsystem also with the tanks and, uh, and bringing the hydrogen to the stack itself uh, to, um, um, to then uh, have the, the, the power output for the electric system. Um, then a big part is here in purple, um, you can see um, the thermal system. Thermal systems is not new for automotive industry because thermal systems we already have, but here we also have adapted solutions um, which will fit uh, also to fuel cell systems and also um, hydrogen combustion systems. And the third big system is then the air system uh, where I will also show which products are in the pipeline and will come um, in the mass production within the next one up to two years for um, truck application, also um, passenger car applications. As you can see here, this is a picture uh, we have taken. It, it's not, not that uh, long ago in one of our plants, and this is our electric air compressor. Uh, this is one, one B sample. So this is an early sample where we already have um, the uh, possibility to share already really early stages together with our aviation partners and customers um, that they and, and you as a customer or partners uh, can also start the testing and also uh, be able to of course, shorten the lead time for aviation specific developments, uh, for example, by sharing the technology that um, um, the, 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 the yeah, sharing the technology, the component and have already um, the parts in an early sample stage at hand um, for test purpose, for example. What is the portfolio uh, we are currently focusing in regards to the uh, hydrogen application in aviation? And these are not all components we will have in the near future. These are only some key components I, I picked and choose to present it today in this forum. Um, we have on the one hand side, the electric air compressor with integrated power electronics and without. Here, I will show you on the next slide a little bit further details and, and insights in regards to this component. Then we have the hydrogen gas injector, bringing also the hydrogen into the fuel cell system itself. Then as you might have seen on the scheme showing uh, the different subsystems, you need a lot of pressure and also temperature sensors. And so here as an example, we have uh, in the portfolio already, or there will be new sensors also generated specifically, for example, for the hydrogen uh, subsystem for pressure and temperature for medium and high pressure systems. Um, then also we are bringing in our expertise for the stack isolation and control valves and also the hum humidifier bypass valve. So there are specifically developed for mass production the parts um, to be able to, um, to open and close and, and have the, the valve operation, especially for hydrogen. Yeah? And also there are no uh, recirculation blower. I will give you some insights on the next slides, only some example. Here, the electric air compressor. Uh, the electric air compressor in general uh, extracts together with the power electronics the desired quantity of air from the ambient atmosphere, compress it, and makes it available for the, for the uh, needed pressure level. Here you can see it's looking like a turbocharger. Um, here we will have um, the possibility to adapt it on a modular basis. For example, here you can see this is a, a one stage or even a, we can have a two stage approach for this um, turbine, um, turbine part, for the compressor part. Um, we can also adapt the aero design um, of this component to be able to um, uh, cover the different, and they will be finally at the end very different, the different needs um, of, the, uh, of the customers. Um, what we have also is the high-speed electric motor. Um, and here you can see this is with the integrated separate power electronics, but there will be also a solution with an optionally um, separate power electronics, which will allow us and will give us the necessary flexibility if you're looking then in the next 
years uh, into a certified system. As other speakers also presented, uh, like uh, the final mass production of such systems will be then, yeah, 2028, we heard in another speech, uh, or even uh, later, for example. But here you can have the possibility to use as an early adopter in an early adopting phase, uh, also proven technology, for example, with the uh, integrated power electronics and later prepare uh, an aviation specific electronic all according to the aviation standards by these detached and optional separate power electronics, for example. The electric air compressor, what we currently have in the pipeline is for 400 volt and 700 volt applications and the mass flow up to 150 gram per second. And the engine speed is like up to 120 thousands of RPM. Uh, what is also very important, the complete system will be oil free, so that means that we can totally avoid any oil um, um, the problem at the stack, so in regards to cleanliness, um, this is like an air uh, bearing um, and there's no oil uh, in the electric air compressor at all necessary. On the other hand, uh, we will have the hydrogen gas injector, which is also key for a, a fuel cell system. Um, you can see here the hydrogen gas injector is uh, on the stack anodite uh, necessary um, for the medium. Uh, we will have the medium pressure coming from the tank. Um, the hydrogen gas injector will work up to uh, 3.0 gram per second of flow rate of hydrogen and up to 14 bar, um, which he can deliver uh, to, the, to the stack itself. Um, what is also good to know at this product is that the shutoff function uh, is uh, inti already integrated and we can get rid of uh, like a medium pressure valve in between. Um, we can also put in addition, uh, for example, a jet pump, uh, jet pump nozzle, um, you can see it here uh, on the scheme um, to also uh, to integrate then the, uh, the bypass, uh, which is then uh, the hydrogen, which is not used from the stack and bringing together with new hydrogen back to the stack. Um, we can make a proportional and impartial post operation uh, with, the, with the hydrogen gas injector and uh, the component will be available um, from today's point of view up to 150 kilowatt systems of, uh, of power. The last uh, component I, I presented specifically today is the anode recirculation blower. He conveys the hydrogen, which is not used from the fuel cell stack back to the, uh, uh, to the tank, for example, or the hydrogen inland. Um, here you can see um, that also here we can include, for example, a separate water uh, to a, a separation water function into the, from the hydrogen circle, circuit, um, which is an optional feature. Um, and uh, target application in the beginning will be 24 volt uh, up to 900 liter uh, flow rate. And the working pressure is around 0 0.3 up to 3 bar. Um, as this portfolio might be a good so-called Kickstarter for all the developments uh, and, and partners we, all, we already have in the hydrogen um, uh, aviation propulsion. Uh, and we're really uh, happy to see also that uh, the, the hydrogen propulsion will be uh, one big portion um, within the future sustainable uh, aviation. So thank you very much from my side. This is only uh, a, a close look or short look on uh, some components uh, in regards to H2. We're uh, open-minded in general for all propulsion systems, but we see uh, uh, we need a, a final target solution for using hydrogen uh, to have a sustainable mobility solution of the future. Thank you very much, Christian. And uh this and thank you to all the speakers up to now that you kept the time very well because in former years we sometimes had the problem that we were too long and this especially now would be a little problem because we have our noon time then but uh, for our Chinese uh, visitors in the uh, in the venue, they are going to dinner and there is an official dinner. And sure, uh, if you have been in China, you know how important official dinners are. So I think really great. And we have still have some time for discussion. And this makes me coming to our next and with this last speaker for the day, um, where I'm very happy to have in here, especially as uh, there are some news uh, which yesterday went through the press uh, because Mike um, uh, 
my, uh, Michael Friend used to work a long time for Boeing. Now he is uh, as advisor on the board of uh, Zero Avia. And if you have uh, are looking at hydrogen in aircraft, I'm sure you have heard of this company. And yesterday, through the news, there was the news that United Airlines wants to purchase uh, several uh, 100 power units of uh, Zero Avia, and they signed, I think, an LOI. Um, very great news for the hydrogen world, because for a long time, a lot of people said, no, hydrogen aviation, this will not happen, not in the next uh, short while, but it's coming. And uh, Mike, I see your screen, uh, slide is already on. Uh, your mic is unmuted, so I'll leave the stage for you. And thank you for staying up so late, because Mike is in Seattle. Uh, so he, for him, is really the night uh, uh, which we steal him. But I hope he enjoyed the information he gave, he's getting here and the information he will give us. Thank you, and stage is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Willie. So um, I, I'd like to talk about Zero Avia, which is a fairly new company, and uh, there's a, a real. Uh, moral imperative uh, that makes us want to uh, take action on hydrogen aviation. You know, if you look at uh, the actions being taken by governments around the world, they uh, are really looking for answers to reduce the, uh, the impact of, of CO2 emissions. And uh, there's a real uh, special challenge for the aviation market because Whereas uh, today, a uh, contributes a fairly small percentage of the world's CO2. Uh, if you look at efforts being taken for ground transportation and uh, electricity generation to reduce the CO2 output, in the future, aviation will be a much bigger part of, of the problem. So the, the problem is real. And we have to think about what's the best solution for uh, aircraft and specifically for large commercial aircraft. So Zero Avia believes that uh, hydrogen, hydrogen electric power is the only scalable solution that's really gonna work. Now, you know, uh, Zero Avia believes that uh, there are many possible solutions. Hydrogen is, is not the answer to everything. But if you look at this chart, it compares the uh, uh, capability of different architectures to uh, to really scale up to uh, to larger commercial aircraft. If you take a look at battery electric, uh, you know batteries uh, already are good enough uh, for for ground transportation, for automobiles, for trucks. Uh, but it's almost impossible to imagine that uh, in the next 10 to 15 years, that batteries will be good enough to provide uh, the energy for a, a large commercial transport. Hybrid electric is, is uh, an interesting subject, but once again, there still will be a substantial CO2 uh, production, even with a hybrid electric solution. Sustainable aviation fuels, the, the same problem. There's really only a moderate impact. Uh, now, hydrogen combustion is, is a very old idea. In fact, uh, even the U.S. Air Force was flying jet aircraft on hydrogen fuel uh, as early as 1950, and it's actually quite easy to do, but there are some real issues in terms of uh, uh, contrail formation uh, that are, are really not really well understood. So for now, Zero Avia is focusing on, on uh, hydrogen electric propulsion, because we believe this has the most potential for uh, really CO2 reduction for commercial aviation. So the vision for Zero Avia includes more than just the aircraft. So you'll see later some of the partners that Zero Avia is working with are looking at the uh, infrastructure to go all the way from um, uh, photovoltaic and wind power uh, to hydrogen electrolyzers that would be located directly at the airport, and then also on the, uh, the architecture for the fuel cells and the electric motors 
on the aircraft itself. So Zero Avia is really looking at, at the entire uh, infrastructure required for hydrogen uh, aviation. So Zero Avia was only incorporated in, in uh, 2018. So it, it is quite a, a new company. And uh, they've been going very fast in terms of uh, uh, prototyping and testing uh, various uh, fuel cell electric uh, configurations. So in 2019, uh, they made the first uh, flight of a six seat uh, aircraft based on a Piper Malibu. Uh, in 2019, uh, there was a, a demonstration in the UK of the same six seater with a, a hybrid hydrogen fuel cell battery configuration. And uh, this year, in 2021, uh, Zero Avia is, is coming very close to uh, the first flight of a Dornier 228, which will be powered by a, a 600 kilowatt uh, fuel cell electric power plant uh, on, on one side of the aircraft. Uh, this test aircraft will fly with the uh, uh, hydrogen fuel cell electric power plant on the left-hand side of the aircraft and for safety reasons, we'll be retaining the uh, uh, turboprop engine on the right side of, of the aircraft. So uh, they're looking to, uh, to do that testing early in the next year. And uh, one of the things that you see on the timeline here is that there have been uh, some really major uh, uh, sponsors for Zero, Zero Avia's uh, activities. Um, so they've... Uh, gotten funding from Amazon, British Airways, uh, Alaska Airlines. So uh, quite a large and, and deep base of, of, uh, of investors in this. So you can see the timeline is that the, uh, the first target will be uh, a 10 to 20 seat system in the 600 kilowatt range. Uh, this is the, the type of system that, it'll, that will be flight tested starting early next year on a Dornier 228. Uh, the next uh, aircraft in sight would be a, a regional turboprop conversion where we would take an aircraft uh, originally certified with uh, uh, gas turbine engines and convert that to hydrogen electric power. You can see further on into the future, we believe that there's a possibility of, of scaling these systems up to much larger aircrafts. But for now, the, uh, the emphasis and the focus is on uh, regional aircraft uh, up to the, the multi-megawatt uh, power output. At the bottom, you can see the, the ZA600, which is the, the six-seat Piper Malibu-based uh, test bed, which uh, went through a successful test program financed by the United Kingdom government. Uh, so that uh, testing concluded uh, this year. A lot of you know that we, we had an accident with that air, aircraft, which uh, uh, was really uh, a symptom of uh, the very rapid pace that uh, Zero Avia is working at. Uh, they're working very quickly, learning a lot of things through testing and even learning a lot of things through the, the mishap that we had that will uh, help us to have better safety systems for our, our future uh, test aircraft. So you can see here the 250 kilowatt system that was integrated into the 60 Piper Malibu aircraft. So uh, this aircraft uh, first flew on battery power alone and then was converted to a, a a hybrid configuration with uh, battery electric and with a uh, 100 kilowatt uh, uh, hydrogen fuel cell on board. So uh, the team was very happy about the, the flight tests that were done in the United Kingdom and the, the government of the United Kingdom was satisfied that we achieved all of the integration goals uh, with this part of the, uh, this part of the project and uh, the decision was made to move on directly to the uh, Dornier 228 uh, twin engine test bed for the, uh, the follow on to this. 
So I mentioned that uh, we're looking at the total solution. So uh, even at the test base in Cranfield in the United Kingdom, uh, there is an on-site electrolyzer that's powered by renewable energy to generate the hydrogen that's used for the, uh, the test program. So uh, we're, we're really looking, especially with our, our partner Shell, uh, the, uh, the infrastructure necessary for uh, uh, really supplying hydrogen directly at the airport so that there's no uh, over the road storage or over the road uh, transportation required for the hydrogen fuel. Some of the testing that's happening at the base in Hollister, California can be seen on, on this page. So the, the picture that you see at the, uh, the top is a, a test vehicle that we call the super truck. So this is a ground test vehicle that's currently being used to uh, uh, test the, the 600 kilowatt system that will be test flown on the Dornier 228. Uh, we've been able to use this ground test vehicle to uh, completely test out the, uh, the system architecture, which can then be directly transferred to the flight test aircraft. So by the time the aircraft flies, we already have many hours of uh, testing of everything from the propeller back to the, uh, the fuel cells and the, uh, the hydrogen storage system. So what you can see on the right is the plan for uh, the much higher power multi-megawatt multi engines that would be used for aircraft like the de Havilland Dash 7. So you may have seen recently that we've signed an agreement with uh, de Havilland of Canada to work on a, a conversion for their regional turboprop aircraft uh, for service with Alaska Airlines. So the the, the range of partners uh, that we have commercial agreements with is, is quite large. You can see all the way from uh, Shell, Hyzon, and High Point uh, to United Airlines, Amazon. Uh, a lot of uh, very big companies have uh, a lot of belief in what Zero Avia is trying to uh, accomplish and, and believe that we have a solution that will get them uh, uh, a very early solution for reducing their, uh, their CO2 production. So uh, Zero Avia has grown very rapidly. They have about uh, 70 employees now, a lot of whom are, are drawn from different parts of not only the aviation industry, but also from companies like Zero Motorcycles. Uh, Gabe DeVault, who's our head of uh, ground testing and powertrain development uh, uh, previously helped to start the Zero Motorcycle Company, which is the world's largest electric motorcycle producer. So uh, a lot of experience, uh, not only from aviation, but from uh, ground vehicles. We have a, a strong advisory board, uh, many of whom are pilots. Uh, my experience on the advisory board comes from uh, uh, the flight of our first uh, manned fuel cell power demonstrator airplane uh, many years ago from Boeing's uh, research center in Madrid, Spain. So uh, the investment from top investors and accelerators continues. Just yesterday, there was another announcement of uh, another round of investment, which will provide enough money to get us all the way through the development and flight testing of the Dornier 228 test aircraft. And then to begin the development of the, the, the megawatt uh, power system that's gonna be used uh, for our work with uh, de Havilland and Alaska Airlines. So uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about what we're doing. And uh, we hope to have uh, more progress to tell you about at the, the next eFlight uh, forum. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mike. And uh, I just have to get my eFlight Forum a slide back on again. Uh, yes. Um, and yeah, we uh, would like to have, now we have the last discussion of the day. 
And for this last discussion, I asked all the speakers of this last session, if you could come switch your camera back on, Christian, uh, uh, Philip, uh, Josef, um, uh, and uh, uh, also our Chinese uh, coll colleague, Mr. Chen Peng. Um, uh, if he would come back to the microphone again uh, for all the speakers in the audit uh, audio uh, in, in the uh, venue for all the speakers in the venue if you ask uh, questions just raise your hand or come up to the stage and then you could ask the questions um, uh, until then i'm not sure if joseph is still there um maybe he has some other commitments so we anyway we we talk here and i have a lot of questions on uh, vtol systems because oh the first one would be does any one of you is already working or you heard about systems with uh, eVTOLs because we had the eVTOL session, session in the morning. We uh, have, uh, the, so there are several VTOLs uh, with electric aviation, but especially the VTOLs as for the vertical takeoff, they need a lot of energy. This uh, VTOLs with battery, very often they have a very limited range. So fuel cell could be one of the solutions. So the question would be, let's say first, uh, perhaps um, Mr. Chen, do you uh, have any uh, VTOL project you're working on with fuel cells? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, there is, uh... Uh, is a questioner here. Uh, please. Uh, ah, yeah. ah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so we maybe uh, I'll ask the question again after the questioner is coming up to the stage. Hey, Michael. Uh, nice yes. to meet you. Uh, this is Haile from uh, Hydrogen Craft Cooperation in China. And actually, I live in uh, Virginia, USA. <laughs> My family is still there. Uh, I've been watching you guys for a long time. Um, I know that a uh, long time ago, you've been working with uh, power cell, right? On the fuel cell? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. Uh, so just to, my curiosity, what is the uh, uh, total power density of their system? I mean, uh, uh, the stacks plus uh, the air system and uh, all other accessories, including the cooling system and the cooling water. What is the total power density of it? I, I don't have the numbers right here, but you know our our uh, calculations have shown that uh, the the power density of the entire system, including hydrogen storage and distribution and, and radiators, uh, is is going to be. Uh, far, far better than anything that you're going to be able to achieve with a, a battery powered system well into the future. Yeah, um, yes, you know, yes, they, I believe so, because uh, we also work on some uh, hydrogen powered uh, craft. Uh, one uh, first we made was a, uh, a hydrogen powered fixed wing. On this fixed wing, we used a light weighted uh, fuel cell and we achieved a, a power density of uh, 900 uh, uh, I mean, uh, watt, watt hours uh, per kilogram. Yeah, mm -hmm. 900 watt hours per kilogram. And right now we are working on one project. Uh, it is a, a cooperation between us and uh, COMAC. We're making a 100 kilogram um, um, uh, maximum takeoff weight uh, EVTO, which is powered by a hybrid of lithium and mm -hmm. uh, uh, lightweighted fuel cell. Mm -hmm. And on this one, we use uh, these those, uh, I mean, uh, air cooled stacks instead of mm -hmm. uh, the water cool, and it gives us a very uh, pretty uh, power density. You know, in terms well, of the you power. Know the, the number that you use, the nine hundred uh, watt hours per kilogram, is a really interesting number when you take a look at at the the state of the art in automotive uh, battery packs. You know, for instance, I've just looked at the. Uh, technical teardown data for the Tesla Model 3. Mm -hmm. And that battery pack system 
uh, has a, a total uh, specific energy of about 162 watt hours per kilogram. Yeah. So when you compare that to your number of 900, you can see just what kind of an, an advantage the hydrogen fuel cell has over the battery. Exactly. Battery. Yeah, exactly. If I can give you a breakdown uh, uh, on this uh, fixed wing, we use a, a one kilogram, uh, I, excuse me, I mean, use a one kilowatt uh, uh, air cool fuel, sta fuel cell stack and plus uh, three uh, cylinders where we have a seven percent of hydrogen density on it and then uh, those uh, three cylinders they are 350 bar <clears throat> and uh, the weight of it is only uh, uh, four kilogram with you know i mean the valves and the sensors everything is transducer already included and this is yeah it, it's pretty good so uh yeah, I want to keep in touch with you guys. <laughs> I know you're the leader of this uh, industry, but we, we work on a, a little bit different route, which uh, we actually focus on the fuel cell stacks. Hope someday, you know, we can work together on this. All right. Thank you right. very you much. Okay, yeah, bye -bye. thank you very much. And uh, maybe we'll leave your details with uh, our staff there on the ground, and maybe we can have you presenting at one of our future events and send us uh, information on this and we'll try to share it with all the people we have here. Let me now uh, come back. He, he was also answering a question as she said, they are working with some eVTOL, but uh, Mike and Philip, are you aware of any VTOL uh, which may be getting in the air fairly soon, let's say in the next two years with fuel cell capacity? Uh, yeah, this, uh, I mean, at, at this time, you know, the no, one no. client we work with, yeah, they, they have it, but uh, I believe in the future, you know, there may be something else. Yeah, they are looking at some bigger ones that, as a UAM application. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, uh, so Willie, yeah, what, what I can say is, is that, uh, you know, there are certainly some eVTOL manufacturers that have recognized that a hybrid solution is required for the kind of missions that they're going to fly. Mm -hmm. I have not been aware of many of them that have looked at the hydrogen fuel cell hybrid solution yet, though. Mm. OK. And Philip? You're, mu uh, you're yeah. muted. OK. Now you can hear me. Yeah, yeah now yes, I uh, can hear you. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are working specifically with two, um, two uh, programs. and. Uh, the bigger problem on the UAV at the moment is still the complexity for flight control systems. So they are focused more on their certification and manage uh, the short uh, range flights first with batteries. Um, but um, when they solve this, uh, once they solve that, um, it will be the uh, fuel cell for sure. Yeah, um, it will be hybrid and one component will be the, the fuel cell. Uh, it will be the second phase. So you will first uh, see the VTOLs fly with batteries and after that with the fuel cell. Mm. Okay. Um, question for Christian. As you coming, uh, like Bosch is coming from the automotive industry, and a lot of people, when they're looking, at, especially at the VTOL side, they say, okay, there is high, high volume which will be needed. Um, and uh, for this, on the fuel cell side of uh, Bosch GA, um, will there be uh, some uh, synergy effects which you think the aviation people can have from the car parts? Or will it be that you say, no, the car parts are too heavy because you have other priorities that you could use them in uh, aviation too? No, the, the, thank you really for the question. There will be definitely synergies for, for, for some components. Uh, that is what we also get as reaction from the market. Uh, so we are now actively promoting what is coming up into the portfolio for the automotive and also uh, off-highway applications since uh, a few months. And um, based on the request we're getting from aviation partners, uh, nevertheless, if it is a VTOL or an, uh, um, a fixed wing aircraft manufacturer or an engine uh, manufacturer, um, there is a strong demand because at the end, 
only to to also uh, highlight some figures like the air compressor I have shown. Um, there is the, the design is intended to have minimum 500,000 of starts and stops, for example, uh, which you definitely then also need some reliable products at the end. And uh, also shortly add to the first question, um, I think um, as for the mobility needs of, uh, of all of us, uh, for the ground vehicles, we will see uh, a very diversified um, solution on the powertrains, like we have battery vehicles, we have fuel cell vehicles, we have still regions with the combustion engines for the next decade. Um, and um, I'm pretty confident that such a diversified portfolio will strongly depend on the mission of the aircraft itself. Uh, so we will have the combustion engines, we will have then uh, fuel cell applications, and we have a battery powered uh, EV tolls uh, finally at the end also in the market. Yeah. So we are mm -hmm. here also uh, open in uh, any technology which will be, uh, will be then at the end in the market also for aviation purpose. Yeah. Okay, a uh, question to Mike and Philip, uh, which is, when do you think that you will have uh, uh, the first certified fuel cell aircraft flying? Maybe a small GA aircraft, maybe a larger one, um, just uh, a guess on a very found, profound guess as you have a lot of know-how in this area. Well, you know, uh, Zero Avia has a timeline that says they would like to have the first certified uh, fuel cell regional transport in, uh, in mm -hmm. 2025. In 25, okay. So the smaller, if there is a smaller one, it should come before probably. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Philip, where, how is your, uh, let's say, uh, profound guess? Same timeline. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, same. in timeline. Yeah. So we will fly um, with this system uh, that will be certified end of 23. And okay. um, then there will be uh, two years more uh, for the certification. Yeah. We are so, working so, on so. it um, already. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. This was the, the four seater uh, you were mentioning in your presentation. Exactly. That's the Apple's i2. Uh, also with the power cell stack with the uh, uh, MS100. Mm -hmm. um, uh, two of those stacks, uh, twin engine aircraft to uh, to get the redundancies, the necessary one, mm -hmm. and um, um, it should be feasible. Yeah. So, um, so the power cell stacks you say are these power cell stacks which are normally also used in automotive, or are they specially de designed for aviation? No, the basic design is uh, for automotive and stationary applications. Uh, I think mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Grimm knows that system also quite well. So uh, we all three are connected via power cell here. Uh, and uh, we modify together with a um, uh, well-known German uh, research institute with ZSW mm -hmm. uh, and power cell together. We are developing an aviation system, what means mainly uh, to uh, modify the compressors and the humidifiers um, and uh, the electrical systems, electronical systems. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got the signal here that um, we maybe we have one time for one last uh, question, which we uh, can have, and then uh, we hope to see you next time again in reality. And then, because this would be now the good time of a forum like this, because now we would go and having a beer together and we would could, uh, start the discussions, uh, uh, which sometimes are even more effective than the discussions on the stage or the, the, the discussions which you do very serious in the, on the business area. So um, the fuel cell, how do you think the hydrogen uh, for this, aircraft which we will use there will be produced do you think more of a production of hydrogen close to the airfield that you don't have to have uh, a lot of transport on the ground or do you say no because they, there must be a, a transport on the ground for other applications like heavy trucks or something like this anyway it doesn't matter 
where the uh, hydrogen is produced, because I think this is one of the big dangers or, big, or also big fears which people have. And they say, oh, if there is a hydrogen truck driving through the street, and we know the Hindenburg disaster with hydrogen, so there is still a, a lot of fear. So just from each of you, short impression, and I think then we are done for the first day. Well, I, I can start and uh, I can yes. tell you, going back to the 1980s, I did studies at Boeing about uh, hydrogen fuel. And we concluded, and I think many other people have concluded that uh, generating the hydrogen at the airport is, is the best way to do it. When you start looking at uh, large quantities of aircraft using hydrogen as fuel, uh, you know, it simply isn't very practical having, uh, uh, you know, road transport or pipeline transport, you know, with jet fuel, it's quite easy to have a, a pipeline going from a refinery uh, to the airport. And, you know, the physics just don't work very well for the transport of hydrogen in, in the same method. So I, I think it'll be generated at the airport. Okay, Philip. Yes, Mike is right for bigger airports, um, but for the smaller airfields uh, with lower um, uh, movements of aircraft, it will be uh, um, it will be transported uh, to there and uh, and stored in metal tanks, um, in uh, or even in simple fuel stations uh, like bottles and only overstream uh, solutions. We are working on such uh, solutions with our partners because uh, this is. Uh, the chicken egg problem. Um, we have to work on it uh, as well. And uh, as we are focused on the general aviation first, uh, we have to look to the smaller airfields. And there will be some airports that have a good connection to the uh, automotive, uh, to the roads, yeah, where also trucks and cars can refuel. Um, then it makes sense to have electrolyzer on the airport, but in the most of the small airports, it will be a transport solution, I, I think. Yeah. I, I do agree to the, the, the both statements. So there will be a solution for small and also big uh, airports. And like on big airports, I can imagine that uh, the hydrogen will be produced there because there will be a massive consumption and it will be as close or even closer as or so close as possible uh, will be the, the most sustainable solution now. Yeah. Okay, so then I'll say thank you very much for this session. Thank you for the exchange. Uh, we'll keep in touch. And uh, so uh, I will close the session now for today. Hello, Patty. Oh, uh, okay, Jen. thank you. Thank you. The time is late. So we will go to <laughs> finish this okay yeah okay yeah. thank you we uh thank you very much and yeah. see you tomorrow for the next uh okay. maybe you have time you can join as well if you cannot join or don't have time tomorrow to to uh, join uh, to either join or have a look at the youtube uh, channel what you can do is uh, we will uh, have all the recording on our website eFlight forum later on so you can anytime go back and have a look there tomorrow we'll start at eight o'clock a.m central european time again okay. Uh, okay. thanks again for now and thank you very much and see you soon okay mm -hmm. How can you get eFlight Journal? Just scan the QR code on this page. Or just type in your browser www.eflightjournal.com Then you receive the page with the latest online news on electric flying, EV tolls and everything which is connected with electric mobility in the air or you can click the link on the top and then you go to the latest PDF version which you either can read in the Yumpu reader directly on your screen like a conventional magazine or you can go and
download the magazine as PDF file so that you can read it offline wherever you want. Thanks for watching and goodbye.